Welcome everyone, it's Jennifer. Today's video is a little bit different in that I want to show you five different ways to add gold foil to your projects. Gold foil is all the rage and there's a lot of great new products coming out. So in this video I'm just going to touch on five different ways that I've had success adding gold foil. So very quickly show you each of them. However, over the next few weeks, if you stay tuned to my YouTube channel, I'll be showing cards using all of these techniques. I like some of them better than others, and I'll be honest about those throughout this video today. So we're going to go through all five ways, but first let me show you the foil that I'll be using. I'm using Deco Foil from ThermoWeb. That's what you see here in the tubes. There's a lot of it in this little, these little bottles. This stuff is very thin, so there's a lot in there, and it comes in a lot of great colors. I'm going to use the gold for today's video, but keep in mind that there are lots of different shiny colors you can use. Ranger also sells some foil sheets. There's less in a package. You can see they're smaller here. And I've had pretty decent success with these two, so there are a few options out there. The foil itself is very thin, so on one side it has the shiny color, on the other side it's like a matte silver. And whenever you're using this, you want to make sure the, si the shiny colored side is facing up, which you'll see me do a lot in this video. So I'm going to go through all five of uh, the techniques that I wanted to share today, and I'm saving my favorite for last, so you guys be sure to stick around for that. First I'm going to talk about using foil with stamps. Now I recommend when using with stamps to use stamps that are kind of forgiving, like this bird image from Hero Arts. It doesn't have a ton of solid area, and it's kind of sketchy. I don't know, it worked really well with this image, and you just want to play around with what stamps you may have. So I have just regular white cardstock for all of these projects. You can use anything you want. And to apply the foil in this case, I'm using a product called um, Flitter Glue. I found out about this from the sweet folks over at Simon Says Stamp. And this is great for using gold flakes, and it works pretty well with gold foil too. So what I do is I squeeze a bunch of it onto my craft sheet or my work surface, and then I take a clean um, ink blending tool with foam, and I absorb all of that glue up into the foam. You can see it just kind of sucked it up, and now I have basically like a little miniature ink pad with the glue in it. If you don't have an ink blending tool like this with the foam, you could use a makeup applicator. So now I'm just going to kind of dab this onto my stamp. You can see I get make sure that it's covered completely. This stuff is very sticky. And I'm just going to stamp this onto my paper and then immediately clean off the stamp. I think they recommend dunking your stamp in water to make sure it comes off. Uh, but whatever you do, you just want to make sure you clean it off. So now I'm laying the foil down with the silver side down, the gold side up. And I'm just kind of pressing it there. You can see it's sticking there onto the glue. Now I find I get best results if I flip it over and use my bone folder to really rub that into place. Just to kind of help stick it there so it doesn't shift when we do our next step. So I'm making sure that I press all around. And now I'm going to flip it over and do the same directly on the foam, or on the foil. And you can see I'm kind of pulling all in the same direction. And you can start to notice that it transfers onto the adhesive that we stamped in place. You can see your image kind of popping up. So I'm just rubbing right across this. This foil is pretty tough. It can handle um, the pressure that we're putting on. And check it out. You see all the foil transfer onto our image. And it is just beautiful. Now I would recommend playing around with different stamps and seeing which ones work best for you. You can use that glue on your clear stamps if you clean it off right away. And check out that pretty shine you get. It's not perfectly smooth because it used an adhesive to apply the foil. But it is just beautiful and a lot shinier than you would get with heat embossing. And check it out. You can use the negative space of your foil on another project if you want to just glue it right onto a project. I think it'd be beautiful. So there you can see the gold shine that you can get using your stamps. If you're wondering about using this technique with other liquid glues, I would encourage you to give it a try. I do know that this uh, flitter glue is very sticky, so it does work very well for this technique, but you can try what you have on hand. Okay, next, the, number, the second technique we're going to show is how you can use your foil with your dies. I really like this technique. This one's fun, and I did it for this large hello you see here. Now there are a few different products you could use to stick your foil in place. I highly recommend the Stick It product. This is a newer product. It is super, super, super thin, double-sided adhesive that's great for die cutting. Now you'll see it's so thin you can almost see through it even with the release paper on both sides. On one of the sides there are little folds in the release paper so it's easy to kind of peel it off. So I'm going to place that down, so that side goes down onto my die cut machine, and then I'm going to put my die on top of this. So we're not actually sticking this to any cardstock, we're just sending it through our die cut machine with the die as it is coming out of the package. I love the stick it stuff. 
Okay, so now we have basically a large sticky die cut here. Now this is thin again, so you want to be kind of careful when you're doing this. I'm going to take my die cut out and lay it onto my work surface. Now since this is so thin, here's a trick that is, makes it so easy to work with thin die cuts like this. I just take some post-it tape and I just put it right across the die cut. And this will kind of hold it in place so we can pick it up and move it around. So I'm just going to rub that right onto there. And now I can flip it over and remove the release paper on the back side of our die cut here. Now you could try this technique with any die cuts you have. I wouldn't go super thin, like super detailed die cuts because the um, sticky, the Stick It product is very thin. Um, but you can try it with any dies that you may have. So now I'm going to pick this up and just place it right onto my card where I want it. And you can see how easy it was to pick it up thanks to that post-it tape. Now this is really important. You want to take your bone folder and really press all of that hello word down. You want that as flat as you can get it onto your cardstock. You want to make sure it's really stuck there really, really, really well. Then you can go ahead and take your post-it tape and pull that off. And as you do that, it actually will remove the release paper on the other side. So you can see that release paper come right off. And now we have the word hello there. You can see it just barely, but it's sticky and ready for the foil. I'll take my foil and put the shiny side up right onto my project. I forgot to trim my foil down before I brought it over. You might want to do that so you can kind of conserve your foil. Then I'm going to, again, as always, flip it over and rub that foil in with my bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, anything that has a flat edge that you can rub across it, like maybe a credit card, would work for that. So now I decided to go ahead and trim off that extra and save it for my next project. And now I'm going to take the bone folder right over the area where my die cut is. And you can see it starts to transfer. And this is fantastic because you can see through it and make sure you're, and you can be sure that the foil has transferred to the whole image before you peel it up. So you're able to tell that you've got it all complete. So after you've rubbed it down, this is the magic. This is like the wow. And you peel it up and look how beautiful that is. I just love it. Now it is not as smooth of a foil look as you'll get with my favorite technique, number five, which I'll show you in a bit, but it is stunning and a lot shinier than you could get with heat embossing, a lot smoother than heat embossing, and it is flat because that double-sided tape is so thin. If you have other double-sided tapes, you can try that by all means, and it should work. I just like the Stick It because it is super thin. And think of all the things you can die cut and create foil backgrounds with or foil words or anything you want. It's a great way to stretch your dies. So the first technique shows stretching your stamps with foil, and this was with the dies. So the next technique is using your foil with your adhesive or with your tapes. This is super easy and it's just something that I think would be great for maybe a background or kind of a border effect on your projects. So for this I'm using a double sided tape from Be Creative. Now it comes in all kinds of widths here and I'm just going to take this thin, I think this is an eighth of an inch, and I'm just going to put stripes across my card. So you could die cut this stuff if you have the big sheets of this Be Creative because they comes in, it comes in sheet form. But here I just wanted to show you how easy it was to take any kind of double sided tape, put stripes down on your card, and then add the foil to it. If you have like a tape runner, you could even put a strip of your adhesive from the tape runner across your card and then add the foil to it. And I know some companies have come out with shaped little adhesive stars and stuff that you can put to your cards and you can use the foil with those also. So I used my bone folder on the back of the card and now I'm going to the front. This took a little bit more work to transfer all the um, all of the foil onto the tape, but you could see right through it and know that it's transferred. And there you have your foil stripes. Now these are a little bit raised because of the thickness of the tape, but it still is quite beautiful. And it's just something that you can quickly add to your projects and it doesn't use up much of the foil at all. I encourage you to look around your craft room because I bet you have an adhesive that would be fun to use with foil. Okay, so the fourth technique is to use foil with stencils. I was determined to come up with a way to use my foils with my stencils because I'm also currently addicted to using stencils these days. And this technique is really fun. So I'm using a new stencil from Tim Holtz. I just love this flourish stencil. And I'm going to tape it on to some white cardstock here. By the way, I know that some of these techniques with the foils work on fabric. So I encourage you to check out all the different things you can use the foil on fabrics with also. So I'm just going to make sure that this is taped well in place. Now, I am using a spray adhesive over the stencil to add my foil. 
I just grabbed this old spray adhesive I have. I don't know if they make this particular one anymore, but I would check out any kind of spray adhesive that you may have and just give it a try and see if it works for you. So what I did is I took this outside and I gave it a quick spritz to make sure that I covered all the open area with the spray adhesive. Now I ended up trimming my white paper a little shorter because I put my thumb right in it and messed it up. So that's why the paper is a little smaller here. And then I just went ahead and pressed my foil right onto it. It wasn't completely dry and it seemed to be okay. Then I again will press it from the uh, back side and then I'll flip it over and rub right on top of the foil itself. And I found that this, you really want to make sure you rub this well because it doesn't have as much adhesive as normal. Now here you'll see that I actually cut this down. And the reason I did that is I wanted to try running it through my laminator, which you'll see in the next, um, in the technique number five. But I cut it apart so I could try half of it through the laminator and half just rubbing it on with the bone folder. And you can see you get good results either way. I think running it through the laminator helps to kind of press it in place. The one on the right is done with the laminator, which I'm going to show you in a moment. But check out that cool effect that you can get with your stencils also. So the foil is fun because you can use it with your dies, your stamps, and even your stencils and check out the fun shine you get. So now we're on to the fifth technique which is by far my favorite and I warn you this seems a little intimidating at first but I promise it isn't so just stick with me here. This is using foil with printouts. Now to do this you need to have some sort of laser printer. I have a very inexpensive um, black and white laser printer here at home. I'll link to the one that I use. If you don't have a laser printer you can take it to Kinko's. You need anything that prints with toner to do this technique. You also need a laminator. Now that sounds intimidating. I have a very inexpensive laminator here. This is very inexpensive. I had one for a long time. I couldn't find it to be honest with you. So I just bought this new one and it works very well. All you got to do is turn it on, let it heat up, and you can, you're can you ready to go with adding foil. Now check out how easy this is. Just take a piece of typing paper and fold it in half. This will be what you kind of send your project through the laminator with. I then have a piece that I printed with my laser printer. This happens to be my daughter's Valentine's. Again, if you don't have a laser printer, just take this to Kinko's and they can print it and you'll be good to go. You just need toner for this to work and it is amazing how well it works. I promise, I promise. Okay, so now I'm going to take my foil and I'm just going to put it on top of here, face down, and run this through my laminator. And it is almost magical. So I'm just going to take this, lay it right on top, put it inside of my folded piece of paper, and put this in the laminator. The laminator slowly pulls this through. It takes just a couple minutes. It slowly pulls it through and puts pressure and heat onto it so you can transfer that foil onto your project. You can see it moving through. While this moves through, I wanted to show you some other examples I did. Check out the detail that I got here. I just printed this background from Studio Calico onto some cardstock and then put the foil on top. Now these cards I'm showing you here are part of a video that I'll have coming up very soon to show you how much you can do with printing out your own images and then running it through a laminator. And here's a birthday card that I did that has a couple different colors of foil on it. So I think these results are fantastic and so fast to do. So it's definitely worth it to get something printed with a laser printer and then run it through the laminator. Okay, so I let it cool just for a second, peel it off, and check that out. Bam! Super, super awesome. It is smooth as can be, shiny as can be. Definitely the best results of all of the techniques. And so very fast to do. I did all my daughter's Valentine's in 45 minutes this way. Now one thing I really want to mention is that of all these techniques, this one is the most durable. You can scratch it and the foil doesn't come off. With all the adhesive techniques I showed you, it does scratch a little bit. If you scratch it like with your fingernail, you can scratch the foil a little bit. It's not a problem. I'll still send cards that way, but you definitely get the best results using printouts and a laminator. Another great thing about this technique is many companies have free downloads that you can use to just print out and do your foiling. I'll link to lots of those in the future. Now I do want to mention again that I have a lot more to come. I'm going to be showing lots of videos with techniques using foil over the next few weeks. And also Heidi Swap has a product called the Mink Machine and it is a machine that's used to add foil. And it's supposed to be a fantastic machine with lots of perks. And as soon as I'm able to get my hands on one, I will definitely be showing you that too. So be sure to stay tuned for that.
Now, if you're interested in any of the products I use, I link below in my YouTube description, or you can head over to my blog for much more information. And be sure to subscribe so you can see the foiling videos that I'll be doing over the next few weeks. Thanks again for stopping by, and I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to spend with me.